Buenos días a todos. Morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. This is Frank Kerol, and unfortunately, no, I'm not any kind of relative for Sergio Busquets, even though I could look like, right? We are Econo Soccer Services Barcelona, and today we are here to talk about how to generate more revenue in your football club through a methodology department. We have been working, meeting decision makers from different football clubs all over the world. And when I mean decision makers, I mean those people from the management board, right? Owner, president, sporting director sometimes, CEOs. And I want to share a reflection with you, right? This reflection that comes that we are here today. We are thinking, what are decision makers' main concerns, right? So for instance, how many decision makers we have here in the room today? No decision makers? One, two? Ah, some more, perfect. All right, so our main concern was what really, what does not let you sleep at night, right? What is that first thought that you have when you are entering in the office on Monday morning? And thinking about this and talking to all these decision makers all around, we have talked to them and summarized three of them. Three of the biggest concerns almost all decision makers agree on. And the first one is the one that all of them agrees. Do you guess which one? Money, but not money, right? But money. Yeah. So now, no jokes. S club finances is the first and number one concern for all decision makers worldwide, no matter where. So how I will make my football club viably possible, how can I have that money to sign that player? How can I have this revenue to build my new facilities, to allocate those salaries for that player that we want? Right? First concern. The second one, which one do you think? To win, right? We want to win the weekend, we want to win the championship, we want to be able to promote to the first division, we want to fight to win not to be relegated to the second one, correct? So the second biggest concern for the decision makers is the sportive results. If we win, we are calm, we are doing things right. If we lose, we have the pressure, media is coming, we are doing things wrong, right? How we sign that striker that will score more goals, how we make sure that that player that we won't, don't leave us. So we have club finance, we have sporting results, and third one, legacy. So we want people remembering us because we have improved the club, right? So legacy and everything, all those weekly, day-to-day -day urgencies that puts us in between our objectives and what is finally happening, right? We know we could do better, but we have that important match on the weekend. We know we have promised this, but mm, we have to sign this new coach. We have always thought on that idea, but you name it, correct? So we summarize the pain points for the decision maker and these three, club finances, sportive results, and to leave a legacy. Reflecting on this, we have found an opportunity. We know that most of leagues and most of the clubs are waiting for that source of income called TV, TV rights, broadcasting. However, there are other leagues, if not ask the Colombian friends, that they don't have that same deal, right? And this opportunity is talking about another option to generate 
more revenue and also to be able to save budget. I will invite you to take a look at this chart. This is the market transfer evolution of the 200 most expensive under 21 transfers. As you can see, there is a clear tendency here, and this is worldwide. When in 2010, we would buy, we would spend 50 million euros, five years later, we were expending 450 million, and today, we are spending above 1,000 million euros, and we have not included winter transfer. This is clear. And this is worldwide. So it is an opportunity to build up your club strategy based on developing homegrown players and selling them. I know, I know that we haven't discovered you anything here, right? This is something that you probably know already. But we are coming here to bring you and explain you an innovative solution to use this chart that we saw before in your advantage. For us, it's easy. You should build a strong identity, a club with a strong, recognizable, and that identity could be differentiated to other clubs with a clear processes of developing players. To have these processes clear and organized are the key to develop young talent and be able to promote it to the first team. And you will ask me, what's identity? What does identity mean? Well, identity, it's everything. It's how we behave in the field, how we do it in the clubhouse, in the offices, how we communicate between us, members in the club, how we communicate to people outside, how we coach our coaches, how we teach our players. Identity is also that conversation that our coaches will have once the training is finished, drinking a beer in the bar. That's also identity. Identity, it is how we organize our jobs. If you master all this, you will have a very clear and a strong identity. And these four main benefits. First one, if you work on your talent, if you develop your own talent and you promote your talent, you will increase your revenue because you will be able, you will be able to sell players. You will save budget because promoting your players to the first team will save you to be able to sign new players. Three, you will make the difference. Sponsors, brands, want to be aligned with other brands, right? If you differentiate yourself from the other clubs, you will have a strong identity. And what do you think brands want? What do you think brands will prefer? To align themselves with a club that is differentiated to others or with a club that is like the others. And last, to leave that legacy, right? To leave the club better than you found it when you entered the club. And you will tell me, yes, this is, um, this is very nice to hear, right? This is, there are lovely words, everything looks like magic, but how, how we make this possible? We have a solution. We have a proven process. So imagine the objective is to build, to be able to sell players, right? Build talent, develop talent, and sell players as the objective. We are proposing the structure and methodology department. And this structure powered by processes. And for us, when we enter into a project, when we develop this structure, we always implement these four main pillars that are recompiled in the Econo method. First one, TalkMate. What's TalkMate? TalkMate are those technical discussions 
that our technical people will have, okay? So from who we are, our history, our limitations, and who we want to be. Our game model, training plan, content planning, right? So these discussions held weekly, monthly, that our people will have are the ones that will build who will you be in the future. Second, Philrec. Philrec is when we go to the field with the coaches, in the trainings, in the matches, and we provide them support, right? We make sure that everything that we have been talking in the TalkMate sessions is being implemented. Because at the end, this methodology department is that department that is not looking after the weekend result. That is important, but that's coach's job, right? This department is the one that will look after that identity. Fieldrec also, it is elite groups. When we enter into a club, we create an elite group. An elite group is that group of 10, 15 players from the academy, five from the first team, that are our collarbone, right? The ones that we lean on them to build up club academy, to lean on them because we bet on them that they will arrive to the first team, and those in the first team that are the pillars of the team. We work on them individually, in the field and in the classroom through video analysis. So then we make sure this learning stays. And you will see after all these elite groups, how their performance increases. Co-learning. The authors of the Econo Method are both university teachers, and they're always looking after what could be the last tendency on, on learning, right? On education. At the end, co-learning is coaches and players, right? We are coming from an era when we saw one coach and many players. Often in the professional football, we see some coaches and the group of players. Here, we are proposing to have coaches and coaches, players teaching and learning from other players, right? So at the end is to take players and coaches and start co-learning dynamics between them. Last but not least, commissions. Right? and how we live our values. Values are the most important thing in the club. And it is not enough to put the values in a paper and put it on the clock room. This is okay, but it's just not enough. Right? We have to live these values. For instance, in a club that we have been working, they have one of their values that is integration. Okay? That's because in their area, there are a lot of races. Okay, and there is a racism, a classism problem. So one of the values is integration. We have created a commission called Big Brother, where one player from one race, from the under 19 team, for instance, will be the big brother of one player from another race of the under 14, for instance, right? And they will be obliged to do an activity weekly, for instance, to have lunch together, to play PlayStation, and also to leave a match together on the weekend, right? That's a way, just, it's just one example, of living your values, yeah? We could be talking about examples and um, a lot deep in detail of these four pillars that are one of the most important things, but we have no time. So we will be more than happy to, to talk to you and discuss about this uh, uh, during these two days or later. And you will tell me, yes, this is, this is nice, but will that work in my club? This is one example. We have many others. Uh, we put this because it's the one from PSG, right? And besides all the victories that you see in the upper part that for us we think that winning is not enough, but should be a consequence. We take a look at the bottom of the page, right? That's 
the thing that we feel more proud about. So Paris Saint-Germain, during, during these three years, they had the greatest amount of players from the academy making his debut to the first team. 80% of the people from the eight elite group that we were talking before made their first debut to the first team. And at that time, at 2018, those players, the ones developed at home, the ones that stayed in the first team, and the ones that were sold, had a market value of 93 million euros. Yeah. That same year, this year, 2018, PSG was awarded with the gold medal of the French Federation as the best academy in France. That was their first time in their history. Yeah. So here we are. We are Soccer Services Barcelona. We are a football consultancy company working for professional football clubs and federations internationally. And with all that it means, right? Starting a project in Japan, another one in Mexico, in the Nordics, in Spain, starting projects in different kind of organizations from the scratch. And with our knowledge, our know-how, the economic method that has been evolving with us since then. So we are here to, to thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Um, Mikel, my colleague, and I will be here gladly to answer you as much questions as you want. If we don't have time here, we, we can meet during these two days in the, in the event. Thank you very much for your attention, and we'll see you around.